How are you? I'm back today with a second video. Since I was late in putting up a video this week, I decided to give you two videos for the price of one. This video actually is actually going to be a discussion video. It's going to be a little chit chat and I'm going to try and clarify some things that I have been asked a lot by you guys and uh, just some things that you know I feel that need some clarification. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so I seem to get this question a lot about what my major is and what I'm studying, being that I do put a lot of Japanese language videos out and being as that my other channel was predominantly in Korea. So I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit about my Japanese and Korean and my school background for you guys. And then after this video, if you have some questions, you go ahead and you let me know and I would do my best to answer them. So I guess I might as well just go ahead and start off and do a whole new introduction. For those of you who are new to my channel, uh, thank you guys for subscribing. My name is Susan. A lot of people call me Susie or Sue, but my name is Susan and I am 22 years of age, okay? I'm currently finishing up my senior year of uni over here, or college, excuse me. I've been saying uni a lot recently. I just hear uni a lot on the Eastern Hemisphere of the world. That's, that's the only reason why I'm saying uni. Okay, so this is the question I get all the time. What's your major? What's your major? What's your major? My major is International Studies. That is my major. And in Japanese, for those of you who are Japanese watching this, my major is Kokusai Kanke. Watashi no senko wa Kokusai Kanke desu. What that means is that I study relations between countries <laughs> all over the world. That's all that means. Now, the thing that my school does primarily is once you become an international studies major, you generally have a focus or a concentration. You have a focus between politics, geography, and history. And then you also have a concentration between wherever in the world you're looking at. South America, or Latin countries, um, Europe, Asia, or Africa. My focus and my concentration are politics of East Asia. That's my focus and that's my concentration. So although I have taken classes for geography and history and as well as classes for Europe, Africa, and Latin countries, I chose to focus on East Asia and politics. So being that I did that, in my school you have to have a certain amount of language credits in order to get this degree because you are studying about international issues. My language concentration is Japanese. That's where the Japanese came from. So what that means is that I had to take about 18 credits worth of language courses in order to receive this degree. And I chose for all of my 18 credits, Japanese. Which also leads me to my minor. My minor, I have two minors, but the minor that gets brought up a lot is Japanese. What that means is that I studied Japanese language and I study Japanese politics and I study Japanese history and I study Japanese literature and arts. I study anything Japan to go ahead and get that minor done. So yes, I can speak Japanese. I won't say I'm at a native level, but I am fluent enough where I can survive in Japan by myself. For those of you who were subscribed to my other channel when I was in Japan, yes, I spoke Japanese most of my time in Japan. So I can survive in Japan by myself with Japanese alone. And my second minor is marketing. So being that I have those three, you might ask, oh, what kind of job, what kind of career can you do with that? Most of the work that I do is US Japan relations or US Korea relations or anything that has to do with the relationship between America and an East Asian country. I can work for governments, nonprofits, and businesses as long as they are working with each other to better their relationships. So that's my major, that's my studies, that's how I learn Japanese, that's the question I get a lot how that work out and yes I know a lot of you are thinking 
that must be hard okay it is kind of hard I'm not even gonna lie to you it is pretty hard but when you want something you will work hard enough for it now the question on how did I start studying Korean comes up often as well because my focus is East Asia there is a lot of uh, trading and just a lot of connection between China Japan and Korea if you look at it on a map they are really close to each other China being here, Japan being here, and Korea being here. So they tend to trade a lot and work a lot with each other and historically the nations are intertwined with each other. So I thought if I knew one of the other two languages that it would benefit me. That is why I went to study in Korea. So I wanted to study it and I thought I could knock out two birds with one stone by taking Japanese courses at the same time studying Korean by being the, um, immersed in the culture. So that is why I went to Korea. Another thing that I get asked a lot is, am I the only black person in my department? How do I feel to be one of the only black girls when I go into these predominantly Caucasian filled jobs or studying in Japan and Korea? How did I feel being black? I get that a lot. And I'm just gonna be real with you guys. It's hard. It's hard if you're not used to being the center of attention and sometimes not for a good reason that's the hard part you will get stereotyped you will get discriminated upon and if I'm just being honest with you it, it doesn't necessarily all come from a bad place it's just people fear what they do not know and at the same time the media portrays African Americans in such a way that Sometimes we're, we're pretty scary and we're pretty violent and dangerous and that's not all of us That's not all of us just like all of Japan is not anime and manga Just like all of Korea is not k-pop and k-drama You cannot hold the, the, these people and these countries to these labels and these stereotypes Because the same way that you would do it to them is the same way that they would do it to you So I use those things to drive me to want to learn more to want to do better to want to reach out to more people and to just want to overall be a better person and that is why I can say to you right now going and studying in Asia was the best decision I made in my life I got out of my bubble of me being an American and an American citizen and America is the greatest country in the world which for those of you who haven't been outside of America you may not get the same sentiments from people outside of America Let's just be real, not everybody likes you because of where you're from. Studying Japanese was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Switching from business to international studies was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And going to Korea was by far the current best decision of my life. And I would not change an absolute thing. But if I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I just do these things to make the world a better place and I know it sounds really idealistic but that's just what I believe you can't change everybody's opinion right and you can't reach everybody but if you took the time to try to reach one person and then that one person took the time to reach another one person if we did that then we could slowly but surely break this cycle of hate and racism and prejudice and just cut that cut it right at the core. Now I know that's pretty idealistic like I said and I've been told I'm, I'm a dreamer and I'm an idealist and I'm a democrat and I'm all of these things but that's just what I think and that's just what I believe and that's why I'm going to keep going on with what I'm doing. So that's why I've started to incorporate these Japanese language videos on my channel and that's why I've started to incorporate you know the Korean videos and for those of you who want to study a language and you're afraid to tell your parents or you know you're afraid about being judged by others the only thing I can tell you is you will never know until you do it. You will never ever know. And then at the same time, do you want to live your life in fear of what others think about you? Because if that's the case, honey, you're not going to live life at all. Trust me. The world is so much bigger than you can imagine. Life is so short and so precious that for you to be held back by fear of others' thoughts and words is absolutely ridiculous. People in this world have bigger issues. If we all took the time to try to focus on the bigger issues, then maybe we could get something done. Go for it. It's your life. And if you find it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. But you know what? You tried. 
And that's more than a lot of people can say about themselves. Did they try? So that's going to be it for this video. I know I rambled on a lot, but I had a couple of things I wanted to say and I really need to get those things off my chest. If there's anything else you want to know, I'll probably do like a Q&A video later on. You just go ahead and let me know if you want to see something like that and post questions wherever on any one of the social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, my Facebook page, or even on this video and let me know. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye, Janet. Nakaike, annyeong. Bye bye.